Welcome back to World Drum Club, I'm Kalani, and in this video I'm going to be talking about therapeutic drumming, how different drumming rhythms or ensembles could be therapeutic for groups. I just had a question from somebody, uh, and so I want to address that. So somebody contacted me who does, she already does group drumming, she's already a drummer, skilled percussionist, and she happens to be skilled in the West African genre, djembe, dundunes, West African drumming. Um, the particular genre of drumming doesn't really matter too much. So if you're a drummer, then you could potentially create therapeutic drumming experiences. But her question was one that I've gotten before, and I think a lot of you may be wondering uh, the same question. So that's what I want to talk about in this video, and then I'm going to do more for patrons at the courses and private lessons tier a little bit later, we'll get into it more in depth over there. But basically, the question that she asked me was, do you have any specific rhythms that are therapeutic, uh, you know, like that she could use for therapeutic drumming because she had a group that she was going to do in a, uh, I don't know if it's in a facility or if it was just four people who were in some sort of therapeutic environment and she wanted to serve them the best she could. And I think that's wonderful to reach out to somebody like me and other people who, uh, I'm a board certified music therapist, but there are certainly other people who are drummers who also do things that are therapeutic in nature. And there's a, that's a spectrum. So, you know, I'm at the more clinical end of it, music therapy, and then there's people that do uh, what you could be, what could be considered as therapeutic drumming who are not music therapists, but still it's somewhere in the therapeutic, you know, spectrum. And then, of course, you have people that are performers and people who teach classes and, you know, are on the education side or the entertainment side. So there's a whole spectrum there. For many of you, I think that are maybe, you know, from the education side or the performance side, and then you want to work with groups to do something that could be beneficial or therapeutic, you know, this is a good question. Um, are there rhythms? Uh, are there specific instruments? I've also been asked that, you know, what's the best drum for some sort of therapeutic effect? What are the best rhythms? What's the best tempo? You know, all, all kinds of uh, questions like that. And I think that's a perfectly reasonable question to ask. Um, so I'm going to answer that uh, in, you know, in the best way that I can, given my training and experience as both a percussionist for 35, 40 years and a, a music therapist for 15 years and also somebody who has facilitated therapeutic music experiences for 25 plus years with different groups and all kinds of different settings. So I'm just gonna speak to that question. So the question is again, um, what are the best rhythms? What are the instruments or whatever it is? What, what's the best stuff you can do as a percussionist or drummer to facilitate a therapeutic experience for people? Uh, and I also want to just right now say that you could have music that you're creating for people to consume as listeners. So they would be having a receptive experience and you would be playing the music for them. That's one branch. The other branch of this could be what can you have people do or what could you teach people or guide people in doing themselves so they would have a therapeutic experience. Um, so there's kind of two branches there, but the overall question is what are, you know, what are the best rhythms, what's the best instruments, tempo, etc. So to answer that, I actually want to back up a little bit and address the question because the question has within it a assumption or a presupposition, uh, which is that there are, in fact, rhythms that are, quote unquote, therapeutic. And I guess by default, there would be rhythms that are not as therapeutic. Um, and that there is this category of music that we would label therapeutic music and the effect that that has is therapeutic for different groups. So that um, assumption is kind of embedded in the question, right? What are the best rhythms? Well, so for me, uh, and based on all my experience, you know, years and years of experience and years of training, 
Um, I would say that we, first of all, maybe start with a different question that doesn't have that assumption. Because in my experience, I don't know that there is a set of rhythms that is explicitly or specifically therapeutic um, over other rhythms or over other instruments or, you know, I don't know. I have talked about uh, tempos that relate to breathing, heartbeat, walking, you know, different things that we do as humans that are, you know, human tempos, if you will, that, that connect with the body in different ways. And some people, and I have done videos on this too, on brainwave frequencies. And you can find teachings out there on, online and offline um, that speak to that, that speak to drumming relating to brainwaves, drumming relating to breathing, drumming related to all kinds of different uh, human rhythms, if you will. Um, so that information is out there. But my answer in general, and like I said, we're going to get into this more uh, at, in, at Patreon in the classes and private lessons tier for people who are interested. And this is where you can go if you're interested in learning more, um, because I want to talk about what I would do or how I would approach this over there. But um, for all of you who are just looking for information and you're curious, uh, what I would say is that facilitating a therapeutic process starts with the people involved and it works backwards from them. So I would ask the question, well, who are the, who are the clients? Who is this for? Um, what is their background? What, what kind of music do they enjoy? Or what kind of music would work well for them? Meaning, and you have to consider culture, preferences, experience, and also generalizations such as and I could say this safely, but it's not a hard and fast rule. Fast tempos usually are associated with increases in energy. Slower tempos associated with relaxation. For example, um, there's also a tendency of monotonous, repetitive rhythms that are simple, could be associated with more of a sedative effect. You know, they tend to put you to sleep, help you relax. Um, syncopated rhythms, rhythms that change a lot, and I'll put those in two different categories, but they work together a lot of the time. Um, those tend to be more stimulative. Why? Because we are pattern-seeking creatures, and when something is a pattern and it's repeating, we tend to kind of put a checkbox by that, and we say, okay, I know what that is, and then we kind of move on. So we don't pay attention to it as much. When things change, we refocus, and that's where our attention goes. And if you want to discover that for yourself or experiment or experience that, you could look out onto a landscape, just look out somewhere in nature, and where is your attention going to go? It's going to go to the little thing that changes. You know, so if, if you're looking at a landscape and you see a person walk in or you see a bird fly away from a tree, that's immediately where your attention is going to go. So if something's always changing in a landscape or in a piece of music, you are going to refocus your attention because you're, that's how you're designed. You're designed to pay attention to changes. You are also designed to not pay attention to things that don't change because we can't pay attention to everything. We need attention on the things that are new and changing. Um, and we don't really need our attention on things that are kind of staying the same. All right. Um, that's another reason that you could drive to work or drive somewhere and not even remember how you got there because you weren't paying attention to it because you don't need to because it's so familiar. All right. So enough on that. I think you get the idea there. So, um, yes, there are tendencies with music, any music, whether it's drumming music or melodic music, drums, singing, you know, other instruments, uh, gongs, crystal bowls. There are tendencies with regard to pitch repetition, maybe tonality, maybe key, um, and that all relates to complexity or simplicity, repetition versus, versus change. So there are tendencies in music, and I'll talk about that more in the course uh, material. Um, but the most important thing, I think, if you're looking to facilitate an experience that's therapeutic for people, is to tune into the people. And then you have to decipher or decide what you think, um, with their help, what would be therapeutic for them, all right? Because 
in my experience, again, I don't know that there is a set of, you know, rhythms that we could just call therapeutic over others. And the reason for that is, is that music is cultural. People from different cultures will experience the same music differently because they grew up with different music. And the, and the music they, that you grew up with means certain things to you. And if it's new music, if it's music you've never heard before, it will not have the same meaning to you as it does perhaps to someone else who grew up with that music. So music is cultural. It's also uh, preferential. The music that would work for you to relax or to get energized could be different and probably is different than the music for someone else to have the same modulation or therapeutic effect. All right, so there's, it's not a simple answer. Uh, it's not as simple as just saying, yeah, the, these rhythms are therapeutic. Even though, and again, there's lots of teachings out there, you may run into people that assert that, that there are rhythms, there are whatever, sacred, let's call them sacred, people like that word, sacred rhythms uh, or secret rhythms. Um, you know, a lot of people like to sell secrets, right? That's not, that's no secret. <laughs> Uh, so there, there are people that may assert that. You can investigate that yourself. I'm just speaking from my experience um, as a percussionist for more than 30 years, 40. Do I want to say? No, not 50. Not that old. Um, and as a board-certified music therapist who has facilitated lots and lots of sessions for people in therapeutic or in therapy or in treatment. Um, so that's where I would point you. Um, that would be my general uh, answer to the question, you know, what are the best rhythms or what are the therapeutic rhythms? So um, I wish there was a simple answer. Uh, I think if there was a simple answer also, another way we can, we can investigate this question is to say, okay, well, if there are, if there is a set of therapeutic rhythms and they have predictable outcomes, in other words, if we could use those rhythms prescriptively, and we could say, oh, you've got this problem, let me play this rhythm, and that's going to help you, it's going to fix you, it's going to, you know, solve that. I think if that were the case, and you could make this assumption, I think it's a reasonable assumption, that if that were the case, that th that would not be a secret, that it would be well documented, and it would be easy to find out, and easy to test, and people would have been doing it already, and it would be very, you know, it would be very well known. So, um... I'm not sure that's the case. Uh, so I think it's, you know, this is all a work in progress. And again, I'm just speaking from my experience. Other people have other experience, other training, and they're going to have their own opinion about that. And maybe you have a different opinion, and that's fine. There's room for everyone. Um, but that's my professional uh, opinion and answer and response to that question. And, um, and it's with um, respect and offered with uh, the utmost regard for all of the drummers and percussionists and all the people who are in therapy and who might be a client or in need of therapy. Um, because to me, that's the most important thing is always respecting the people that we're serving and putting them first, always number one priority. All right, if you'd like to learn more, about this topic and you'd like to do a little more studying with me, you can do that at patreon.com slash Kalani. Sign up for the courses or private lesson tiers and there will be more information over there for you. All right. In the meantime, if you have any helpful and kind comments you'd like to add to the conversation, do that in the comments below. Like, subscribe, hit the bell. And thanks for joining me here on World Drum Club. I'm Kalani Das. I'll see you all in a future video.